Good morning everybody and welcome to this beautiful Pentecost Sunday. We're delighted that you're with us and we just hope we have a great time this morning worshipping our loving Father. So we've got lots planned again uh, for today's service. We've got music, we've got a great talk by the Archbishop of Canterbury that was prepared for Pentecost Sunday, especially for today. And um, today is the kind of the end of this period of Thy Kingdom Come, uh, this 10 days of prayer from Ascension through to Pentecost Sunday. And uh, in Hereford it's been great. All the churches come together and every, every hour of every day has been covered in prayer during this period and all building towards Pentecost Sunday. So, start talking about prayer. Should we start this morning service with a prayer? Father God, we just thank you for this beautiful day. We just pray that you will be with us in all that we do and all that we do to worship you. Amen. Amen. And so to start our service, we're going to have a couple of songs. Uh, the, the second one is that song we've heard a couple of times already during these last 10 days, which is the song Thy Kingdom Come, the hymn that's written favorite. especially uh, to the tune of Tell Out My Soul um, with some special words for, for this season of prayer. Uh, but before that, a little treat. It premiered yesterday on SBS Day Kids. And uh, you've heard of Mumford and Sons. Uh, well, this is Morgan and Son. And, uh, and uh, we'll begin with that. And you can enjoy uh, the sound of Caleb singing. Uh, at the start and then after that I think we'll have um, I think Elliot's going to be uh, joining us as well throughout this service and leading us through so just just enjoy this hour together now and just uh, just allow God just to speak to you and work in you and and just pray that God's spirit will come upon you Little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord and we have walked with him through his journey of love. 
We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread after the Emmaus road. We have seen his return, his ascension to the throne, before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people through whom we make Christ known to the world. So, in response to each line of this prayer, please feel free to say out loud at home, or maybe whisper silently, or even just mouth it silently. The words, fill us with your spirit. Because this is a prayer for the very presence of God to fill our being, which is our desperate cry. It is a prayer that he promises to hear in his word, where he says, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So, as we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. Spirit, as we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. We pray together this special prayer for thy kingdom come. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love. That all who hear your word may be drawn to you. We pray this through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. We wait on the Lord to hear this prayer, the cry of our hearts, to be filled with his Holy Spirit. This prayer, we rejoice that he has promised, rock solid promised, to hear. So we come next to the amazing Taylor Band, or as we like to call them, the Taylors. They sing how God himself is our vision and to be filled with him is our greatest joy and dream. Then we'll hear Acts 2, the first coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, inspiring us to pray in our present day for another outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a fresh and continued Pentecost, which would change everything in our world. Then Archbishop Justin Welby brings us a special message for this year's Pentecost, the first of this new decade.
2 verses 1 to 12. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? <clears throat> then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Spirit came upon the disciples gathered in fear in the upper room on the first Pentecost. And the result was they went out. Well, the last few weeks we've known all about going out. We haven't, in fact, been able to go in. For good reasons, but not everyone agrees with me on that. But what does it mean for us today? I want to pick up a couple of things from the story in Acts chapter 2 because they are characteristic of what the Holy Spirit does in each of us and in all of us and in the world around us. First, there is unity created. And the biggest difference is we have our languages. They set our culture, they divide us because we can't communicate with each other. And so that miracle on Pentecost, reversing the story of the Tower of Babel, in which people hear what God is saying, whatever their language, that miracle is a sign of the work of the Holy Spirit. That miracle happens today. In our prayers, we reach out round the world. We pray for the Holy Spirit to open people's hearts, the love of Christ. That's what the Thy Kingdom Come prayer season is about. Each of us prays for five people, not as a recruiting exercise, but so that they know they're loved by Jesus Christ. Come into his body and hear what God is saying to them. Second, they go out and the numbers increase. Growth in the church 
is in many parts of the world normal. And in many parts of our own country, it is normal. Not by bludgeoning people, but by loving them into seeing who Jesus Christ is. At the end of the story, 3,000 people become part of the church. At the end of the story, 5,000 people become part of the church. It's an extraordinary story. It's about repentance, turning around and going with God, learning to depend on God. And we see that around the world. I've seen it in the last months in Ebola-stricken areas, and I've seen it in hospitals in this country. People coming to depend on Jesus Christ, and in the darkest places, finding hope, even amongst coronavirus. And lastly, it creates a new and vibrant community, different culturally in every part of the world, but it's new and it's full of the presence of God and that makes it so overwhelmingly attractive. That is the third part of our prayer, a community that shares with one another, that loves one another, that breaks bread, that worships. We will be as soon as possible back in our church buildings. But the church has been more open than other, than ever, driven out into the world in the power of the Spirit and expressing the compassion of love and love of Christ. May God continue to send us, to unite us, to inspire us, and to draw others to share in what we have discovered of the love of Christ. Um.
Spirit, come Lord Jesus. Ancient prayers for his presence prayed over centuries and promised in their fulfilment in the prophets. We don't speak these words into the air, they are heard by God. They are as incense coming before his throne, his throne, and they are heard and they are pleasing to him. He is coming. And he is coming soon. He will not leave us lifeless. He will not leave us empty. We will continue to pray now to our amazing God together and rejoice that he promises to hear us. After that, we'll hear Ezekiel 37 and God's amazing prophecy of very dry bones becoming an army. Maybe we feel like our nation, our whole world is spiritually in deadly drought full of dry bones, cracked earth. And here in Ezekiel 37, we are emboldened to pray for a breakout of new life. New life that is reviving from the dead. A great revival. A call for Ezekiel 37 to be fulfilled in our day. And then after this, we'll have another song and all these prayers and the word of God will, will flow into the prayer through music, where we all together seek after the face of God. Our prayers this morning are based on that passage in Acts chapter 2, which described the outpouring of the Spirit on the disciples on the day of Pentecost. It's split into different sections, and when I say, Lord, thy kingdom come, can you pray after me, thy will be done. Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, thy will be done. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Lord, we thank you that we, uh, your people across the globe today are gathered online, sometimes as groups in homes, sometimes still meeting normally as church. But we thank you, Lord, that we are meeting as one, as your people gathered to praise you, to worship you, to hear your word. And we pray, Lord, this morning for the unity of your people for a unity of purpose, a unity of spirit, a unity of a kingdom that is rowing in the same direction, rowing together and working together to see and seek your kingdom across the world. We pray that locally here in Hereford. We thank you for the movement that's happening of, of, uh, of, of churches gathering from different backgrounds, different uh, traditions, different experiences of Christendom, working together for your kingdom. Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, your will be done. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Lord, we know that you act in strange ways and at, at ch in challenging times, we, that you act in ways that are different to that which we expect or understand. And Lord, we thank you for this time of lockdown, thank you that it's given people opportunity to think and uh, reflect on their own mortality, to reflect on the busyness of their lives, to reflect on what, what uh, wh whether there is life after this one. And we pray, Lord, as people are, are concerned, 
and worried. We pray, Lord, that you would indeed reveal yourself suddenly, reveal yourself through comments of neighbours and friends, through chats on the internet, through uh, different ways, through your word, for people picking up uh, the scriptures. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you would move suddenly in people's lives. We pray, Lord, for your church, that you would revive your church, revive your people with a greater passion and a greater concern for those who are not yet part of your kingdom. Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, your will be done. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the filling of the Spirit, your Spirit in the lives of your people. We thank you for those times when we look back on our own experience, when we knew that you'd put your seal in our hearts and we knew that we were yours. We thank you that no single experience is the same. For some, it's a very dramatic event, something that they know they've moved from darkness to light. They know that they have just all of a sudden experienced the warmth and glow of God. And yet for others, it's a gentle calling, a gentle spirit calling and, and engaging and deepening uh, in people's lives. We thank you too that we can, we've known times when there's been a repeat filling and a repeat refreshment. And Lord, we pray this morning for that refreshment for each one of us. We pray, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit on your people in St. Peter's and St. James Church today. Lord, of thy kingdom come. Lord, your will be done. When the crowd heard this, they came together and were bewildered. They said, utterly amazed, what does this mean? Amazed and perplexed, they said to one another, what does this mean? Lord, there's a lot of bewilderment going around at the moment. Partly caused by COVID, lots caused by inequalities and disease and stress and strife and breakdown in, in family relationships. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of the bewildered and that you are the God that speaks into the hearts of the bewildered. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us as your people to bring your message of hope and of peace and of joy and of sins forgiven to the lives of those who are bewildered at this time. Lord, we pray, help us as your people to reach the bewildered. We know what it means. We know and have experienced some of the Spirit's work. And we pray, Lord, this morning, that you would help us to see and seek the bewildered in our world. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, thy will be done. As Peter stood up and addressed the crowd, he, 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 at the end of, his, end of his sermon, he said, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. Lord, you gave your spirit to empower your people to speak and declare the good news of Jesus in this world. And we pray, Lord, this morning that you would inspire us all to continue that work that's been going on for 2,000 years and will continue until the end of time. 
of us declaring the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to go beyond our own energy and beyond us, but to know your Spirit's help to declare that good news. The bewildered turned into the church. Lord, we just thank you that on one day that 3,000 people became Christians and that since then your church is growing and it keeps growing. We just, well, we thank you for that and we pray, Lord, your kingdom come today in the lives of your people and in the lives of the bewildered around us. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen. The reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, we seek your face, your spirit, truth and grace. Breathe on us, spirit, breathe on us. O oh Lord, we seek your face, your spirit, truth and grace.
Lord Jesus, we do come before you this morning seeking your face. And Lord, we do just pray for your church to be known for your presence again. Lord, fill us with your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder what it is that you're longing after this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Are you wanting desperately to see those dry bones rise and come to life with the breath of God in them again? Well, I've been musing over the Acts passage uh, that we heard earlier on. It's read every year in Anglican churches up and down this country and speaks of that story of the first Pentecost, this wonderful story of the Spirit coming upon the disciples and going out and preaching and thousands of people turning to Christ. And this wonderful image of Peter uh, who before as Jesus has been led to his death, is, is there and is, is denying even knowing Jesus to suddenly he is preaching in front of this huge crowd who Jesus is, all because of being filled with the power of the Spirit. 
And uh, I've been thinking about this passage and, and as we continue to stay in lockdown, what, what can we take away from Pentecost Sunday this year? And what is it that we're longing to see and likely to see? Well, to get the kind of context of the passage that we heard and this story of Pentecost, I want to go to the beginning of Acts. And if you read the very first words, it says this. It says, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. In my former book, it says, the former book that's been referred to, if you're not aware, is uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke. We used to think Luke is the same writer as Acts. And so if you were to turn back into Luke's Gospel, then you will see right at the end of Luke's Gospel, you get this passage of Jesus appearing to his disciples. Now, at this point, you know, the disciples have spent three years. They followed Jesus everywhere. Um, they saw miraculous things happen. They listened to Jesus' teaching. They even got to do some amazing, miraculous things themselves in the name of Jesus. And, um, and then they witnessed Jesus and the passion narrative, Jesus uh, being taken and led to his death and the confusion they, they must have felt. But then the joy three days later, as Jesus appears to them again and begins to unfold all the scriptures to the game and, and, and why these things needed to happen. And then at the end of Luke is the passage that he's referring to at the beginning of Acts. And it says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do you... Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. That's what he says. They were having a meal together at the beginning of Acts there. And he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds, they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. This is what happens, isn't it? The Pentecost story. I'm, but this is the crucial verse for today. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This morning, I just want to leave a simple thought with you. Are you in the place that God wants you to be today? Are you in the place that God wants you to be? See, everything the disciples have been through, there was one simple instruction left. For them, Everywhere they've been, all the, the, the joys, the highs, the lows, the difficulties, the pain, everything they've been through, there was one simple instruction that Jesus left with them before he ascends into heaven. Stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. They had a choice to make, even at that late point. Were they going to do as Jesus said and wait in that place where he told them to wait? Or were they just going to return back to their normal lives, do what they wanted to do? On this Pentecost Sunday, we have a choice to make. Are we going to be prepared and ready in the place where Jesus wants us to be? Now, physically, we may be forced to be in particular places right now. But spiritually, we have a choice. Are we open and ready and willing to receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit from God? Are we going to choose to do that. And if we do choose to do that, are we ready for God to work through us? Not, not choosing what we want to do, but ready and willing for what God wants to do. 
you know, I can't wait, and I'm sure many of you are the same, until that day when we can all meet together again, when we can join in worship together again, and what a wonderful celebration that day will be. But how much more wonderful will it be if we are joined by many other people, if the churches of Hereford see thousands of people flocking to join us in worship to God? We don't know what plans God has in the future for us yet. We don't know what's going to come out of this lockdown. But what I do know is that we need to be ready and we need to wait on God. We need to be in the place that God wants us to be. It's 50 days that from Easter Sunday through to Pentecost. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty act and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church, I call upon you today to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? And if you will, then please join in with these words. By the Spirit's power, we will. By the Spirit's power, we will. And I'm going to ask you some questions now. And if you want to join and commit to this today afresh, then please respond, we will. Will you dare to love each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each, other's, each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. Only you. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this time together over the last hour and uh, hope that God has spoke to you and you felt God with you this morning. Great. So now we're going to come into our favourite time. I'm sure you're at the edge of your seats waiting to hear what's going on in the life of our church. So Andy, should we have our notices? Yeah, can't have an Anglican service without notices. Um, so uh, there's lots going on today. Uh, we were thinking of doing a Zoom coffee morning after this service, uh, but we're not going to do that. So if you're watching it live, um, then you've got probably around half an hour. Quick to toilet go, break. Yeah, toilet break, go and grab some cup of tea or something because uh, Bishop Richard, our bishop here in Hereford, is on Songs of Praise uh, leading that service this morning at 11 o'clock. I think it's on BBC One, but Songs of Praise, 11 o'clock. Uh, check out Bishop Richard and what he has to say. Um, Bishop Richard is also, as well, uh, this afternoon uh, put together a special Pentecost service. It's about half an hour long. And uh, that's involving other church leaders around Hereford, and that's on at three o'clock. Uh, so check that out. That's going to be live, going live on Facebook. It'll be on our Facebook and the diocese Facebook page as well. He's so that's quite at three a busy week, hasn't he, our Bishop Richard? He is. Yeah, he's certainly been very much behind Thy Kingdom Come, and um, and so do listen out for what he's going to be sharing on this Pentecost Sunday as well. Um, if you want to know anything else going on around Hereford, there are various other prayer meetings. One tonight, one tomorrow. And check out the Herefordshire Houses of Prayer website. Uh, hopefully, uh, if Elliot's watched this, then it will be appearing here on the bottom of the screen right now. Thank you, um, just, just like magic. Uh, it, there it is, just there, the Herefordshire Houses of Prayer website. And uh, that's always the best place to go to find out what's going on uh, around Hereford. Um, and one of the notices, which is our Wednesday worship. Um, we, uh, if you saw last Wednesday, you'll know that we are changing it so that we can include more people who would usually be leading and preaching uh, within St Peter's and St James and that's going to be starting on Wednesday um, so do check that mm -hmm. out and the Zoom coffee morning will move to after the Wednesday service instead. It's just a great time for people to check in and reconnect with God and with the rest of our church community so please do join us. So I think uh, that's all the notices um, so um, thank you all for joining us this morning and uh, we thought it would just be really nice uh, to, to finish together by saying the grace, if you'd like to join with us where you are. So, so the, the grace, grace of our, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love, love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us you all, all evermore. Now, amen. I got that wrong, didn't I? That's embarrassing. Be with us all forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Um, hopefully you got that right where you were this morning. Um, we're going to finish by listening to uh, Matt Redman. Uh, Matt's a, a great worship leader who's written many, many wonderful songs for the church. And um, this was recorded last year uh, for Thy Kingdom Come. It was a special event in Trafalgar Square where I think around 10,000 people gathered together to worship God. And uh, you'll know the song. It's 10,000 Reasons. So let's finish our time together by saying, Bless uh, the Lord my soul. Hey, you all lead this today, okay? Here we go. Bless the Lord.